クルスクルスゲクルスちょっとクルス you got a second? グラウンドに出す屋台のコンロの数でしょやっぱり一つの屋台につき一つで統一する。Is this about the portable stoves for all the food stalls on the field? We decided that every stall gets one. Eh, yo, so they are. Oh. Huh? But that's. Okay. What do you get? Oh, Regai wa nasi. Coaching in Kakea Takedo, dame da takara. Ninzu no oak de fuman gar to Koroa. What does she got to the chokset sets me nick? Sorry, no exceptions. I spoke to the principal, but I couldn't get him to change his mind. If any of the bigger groups are still upset, I'll go talk to them myself. Roger. I mean, wait. Why aren't you where you're supposed to be? Kurusu, I told you that if you're busy. We can do this later. I'm done. Sorry, Kawahara. I'm in a hurry right now. Her tone was gentle, but bricked no argument as she hurried to the club room. Miyashiro. またお前か。今度は何したんだ。宮代、you again? What did you do this time? Kawahara cut her off. I didn't know his first name. He was in the same class as Ito and I, and he was the vice president of the student council. いやいい。言わなくてもわかってる。また例のくだらない記者ごっこだろ。それとも探偵気取りか。No, you don't need to tell me. You were pretending to be a reporter again, right? Or was it a detective? I knew why he was giving me a hard time. He didn't like the fact that Kurusu was spending time with me. It, it's not. Um. Nani? What? Ka. Kawahara kun ni meiwak wa kakete nai to omoimasu kedo. It's not any of your business, I think. Kakatte runda yo! Kurusu no jikan ga sakareru to, onaji seito kai no ore tachi zein ni na. It is my business. When you take up Kurusu's time, you cause trouble for me and the rest of the student council. I'm not wasting my time with this. There's no point. I tried to ignore him and just walk on by. So, I heard you skipped most of elementary and middle school. Is that true? <laughs> I could feel my legs tensed up. I stopped. My face got hot. And without thinking, I glared accusingly at Kurusu. She quickly shook her head. Kawahara, I'm really in a hurry right now. <sighs> But he kept on staring at me. I felt like he was grinning a little. It pissed me off. But there was nothing I could say. I did the best I could to ignore him and turn away. I ignored what sounded like a little laugh and hurried to the club room. It wasn't me, okay? The second the three of us were alone in the club room, her expression changed. The smile plastered on the student council president's face disappeared. This was who she really was. 
what wasn't. Kawahara-kun ga itte ta koto. Watashi ga kare ni itta wake janai kara. What Kawahara was saying, I didn't tell him, okay? Betsu ni kinishite nai yo. It didn't bother me. Uso. You're lying. Really, it didn't. Everything about me was different than it used to be. Ma, ma. De, nani? Fukubucho. Hanashi ga ande sho. So, so what is it? Did you want to talk about something, Miss Vice President of the Newspaper Club? Kurusu sighed and changed the subject. Takuru, anata chanto gohan tabetero no? Skoshi yasetan janai? Takuru, are you eating right? You look like you've lost weight. Huh? Where was this coming from? Kore kara dondo samuku natte kuru desho? Sundere tokoro no bokan taisak toka chanto shiteru desho ne? It's going to start to get colder soon, you know? Can you keep warm in the place you're living in? Ugh. Crap. She was in nag mode. Shinro Chosa. Kekyoku Shushoku de Teshitsu Shitan Deste? Shingaku de Teshitsu Shinasai Te Itta Noni. Benkyo Dekinai Wake Shanai Nakara. And I heard you told the teachers you were going to get a job after graduation. I told you to say that you were going to college. It's not like you weren't smart enough. I know it's gonna be hard for you to start now, but I've told you before that I can help. Did you go asking the teachers? And wait, is that what you wanted to talk about? Well, are you eating right? I'm eating just fine. Everything's just fine. I waved my hand to bring the conversation to a close. I didn't want this to end the way it used to, with a six hour lecture about how every aspect of my life was wrong followed by hard labor as my punishment. Kurusu looked like she still had a lot more to say, but a moment later... You skipped school last Friday, didn't you? Huh? Oh, so that's what this was all about? Yeah. I did. Is that a problem? Of course it's a problem. Where were you? You were taking those photos you up to the storage folder, weren't you? Damn it. I figured that would be it. She was right. The pictures I'd taken from the karaoke box from last Friday, when I'd skipped school. I'd started staking out the place early that morning and waited for the manager of the condo building to open the curtains. It was a lot of work, but I was able to get the photos of the scene that nobody else has, except the police. I've told you before that you need to stop spending all your time on this stuff. Kurusu was the vice president of the newspaper club and had been opposed to Ito's and my journalistic ethos for a long time. We'd spend most of our time investigating crimes in Shibuya. Stuff like the attacks on the homeless people that had been flooding the city ever since the earthquake. And urban legends about a company involved in the rebuilding who put up tons of security cameras all around the city. And a serial arson case where the culprit had never been caught. 
And now, these strange deaths. For her part, Kurusu said that a student paper wouldn't be investigating crimes. She wrote normal, sincere articles and made normal, sincere videos. The video about the Shibuya recovery efforts that had won a prize had been mostly her work. Takuru, you're acting really strange this time. You've never skipped school to do this stuff before, have you? That was true. But the reason was obvious, right? I was lucky enough to have this huge mystery right in front of me. This is worth skipping school for. Why? Because it's the first big thing that's happened in Shibuya since we started the newspaper club. This is a huge scoop. Scoop. That face was bad news. It was scary. Ito was right next to me, so I grabbed him and held on tight. Hey, don't use me as a shield. Wait, am I a shield? And why is her face so scary? A huge scoop? People are dead. And to you, it's just a huge scoop? No, I'm sorry. Stay away from me. I really can't handle this. Don't push me. Wait, are you really using me as a shield? Oh crap, oh crap. That face was seriously bad news. The Empress was scary enough that she could send a demon running in terror. I'd never even met a demon, either. That's just how scary she was. Care to repeat that? Want to tell me again how all of these deaths are just a huge scoop for you? Oh, oh shit. I needed to find some way to stop her. And then... I felt the wind rush by my ears. Huh? Uh. Uh. And at the worst possible time, the wind blew through the room. Kurusu didn't even have time to hold down her skirt. Okay, here comes my serve. I've got it. My eyes were locked with kudusus as I heard the sounds from the open window. I hadn't even realized it was open until then. There was a tennis court on top of the special use building. That was probably the tennis team out there. I needed it to say something. W was I supposed to tell her I hadn't seen anything? F v Vice President. Shiro, nan desu ne. Image dori to yuka. White. 
I guess that's just what I'd expect. Idiot, are you trying to get yourself killed? Does it really matter what color my underwear is right now, asshole? <laughs> I flinched at the sudden noise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and then I realized I was sure that was the sound of Kurusu kicking the wall. Or maybe the sound of her murdering Ito. But I was wrong. It was coming from deeper inside the room. <laughs> that girl. Sheesh. Kazuki, come here. Kazuki, are you here? Kazuki! So, headphone. Kazuki! Oh, she's got her headphones on. Kurusu sighed and pulled off the headphones that Kazuki always wore. I've told you before to stop hitting the wall every time something goes wrong in ESO 2. Look, you're making a dent. Hana Kazuki. The only first year student in the newspaper club. But forget her. This was my chance. As Kurusu was rubbing the red mark on Kazuki's hand, I said, Anyway, I'm going to keep following this case. I found a clue, and it might be a big one. Kurusu glared at me for a moment, but... Wow, really? Okay, I'll get ready right away. Tell me all about it. I can't wait. Ito hurried over to the club's computer, desperate for any chance to escape his doom. I stared back at Kurusu for a moment, and then... Boot up the computer and print out the images in the storage folder. Roger. Ito's voice was louder than it needed to be as he turned on the computer. No more punching the wall, okay? Mm. Mm. Maybe she took pity on poor Ito, because she didn't say anything else. But she still crossed her arms and glared at us as she leaned against the wall. She was at least going to hear me out, it looked like. Or maybe this was just her way of making sure I didn't escape. You owe me lunch later. Why? I don't want to. For using me as a goddamn shield. This was 100% your fault to begin with. I'm sorry, but you were lucky. She didn't get violent. Huh? Violent? The vice president? I nodded. Kurusu was the girl that everyone looked up to, but she was actually very short-tempered. It would take me more than five fingers, but less than ten, to count the number of times she'd slapped me hard. When I told him that... Really? 
そんなことする女子高生本当にいんのかヒスカエスコテマエちゃん Are you serious? I mean, really? Are there really teenage girls that do that stuff? That's one step short of a hiss or an esco. Ne, Anatagata. Kangeguchi wa kikoe na yo ni yet te i w a r e nai no? Has no one ever told you that if you want to talk behind someone's back, you should do it where they can't hear you? The almost hiss didn't even bother looking at us as she spoke. <laughs> そのセリフを言ったことはあるんだけどねそれもついさっき教室で<笑> No We just said that to someone though In the classroom <笑>そう I see And then She fell silent She was scary as hell It felt like if I moved She'd kill me おごりだ決定だ大盛りにデザートだ理論は認めん You're buying It's settled Supersized and with dessert too No objections 高校ちゃん今のは That was 50% your fault Actually it was 100% Ito's fault for not keeping his mouth shut No Hey What? 見たか見たよな Did you see it? You saw it, right? Me? Me t e n I didn't. That was a lie. I'd seen it. They were white. <sighs> I glanced at Kurusu out of the corner of my eye. I guess. That really was just what you'd expect. Still, I'd only gotten a glimpse. It was entirely possible I'd been mistaken. If I burned the image into my brain now, maybe the next time something like this happened, I'd be able to react more quickly. So, I prayed for more good luck. If it ever did happen again, I swore I would react as a right sider should. A right sider wouldn't panic over something as insignificant as seeing a girl's underwear. And in a situation like that, it was critical that you stay calm. Hmm? Hmm? When she heard Itu turn on the printer, Kazuki trotted over like she usually did. That online game addict had the best computer skills of anyone in the club. Whenever she was around, it was her job to run searches and organize the information on the PC. But. Kazuki, we don't need you for this. I don't consider this part of our club activities. <sighs> Kazuki gave us a questioning look. <laughs> So, uh, Nanda. Uh, n- yeah, that's right. Kazuki just said, mm, like she always did, and walked away. Kazuki put her headphones on and went back to the corner of the room. She started slamming keys again. I never did know how to talk to her. Actually, It felt like it had been forever since I'd even spoken to her. If you could call this a conversation, that is. She'd been part of the newspaper club for six months, and all I knew about her was that she liked games, knew a lot about computers, and hated talking. In the end, Ito printed out the pictures, and I took them and went in front of the bulletin board before Kurusu changed her mind. Um. If Kurusu was going to listen, it was probably better to start from the beginning. She didn't seem interested in the cases, but even if I ignored her and it made her even madder, even using Ito as a shield wouldn't be enough to save me. Now, 
there are two cases we're looking at right now. The first occurred on the 7th of this month during a Nikonia live stream. It was a public suicide called the Don't Look At Me case. It happened here in Jinna. Just like you probably guessed, a man killed himself without warning during a Nikonia live stream. Strictly speaking, we don't know for sure that it's a suicide. But it sure does look like one. The dead man's name is Yuma Otani, age 21. He was a live streamer who got quite a lot of views with some kind of fortune telling program called Till. I can see the future. So, here's how it went down. First, Otani gave the audience some time to ask questions. He left the camera's field of view. その後、ドアがノックされて誰かが来たらしい音をわずかだけどマイクが拾ってる。after that, there was the sound of someone knocking at the door. It was faint, but the mic picked it up. There's also some voices, but you can't make them out. When he came back in front of the camera, half of his right arm was missing. It was chopped up into tiny bits and sitting on top of the plate he was carrying. And then, he started eating his own fingers, like he wasn't feeling any pain at all. Kurusu's expression changed a little. She probably hadn't known that. The suicide had been big news, even on TV, so she'd probably seen it there. But the details had been so horrific that the news hadn't broadcasted them. But those details could be found anywhere on the internet. It was only a matter of time before someone started putting it all together. The video itself had even started to get around. <laughs> After a moment, he started to scream in pain. And then he died. Evidently, the viewers thought it was some kind of gag or something at first. Hypovolemic shock. When the body loses too much blood, the heart stops working properly. And that's what it said in the police report. And given the time until he collapsed, it's almost certainly right. Ito added. Ito knew more about this stuff than I did. He was a fan of bizarre murders, and he'd read ten times as many killer's diaries and non-fiction crime books as I had. The most likely theory is that he experienced some kind of mental disorder before the suicide. But the police are supposedly looking for whoever visited the room first. They might be responsible for aiding or abetting a suicide. In Japan, if you saw someone trying to kill themselves and didn't intervene, it wasn't a crime unless the police could prove you wanted them to die. But aiding in a suicide, or encouraging someone to commit suicide, 
was illegal. That meant that the police were probably looking for whoever met Otani just before his death. <laughs> Kurusu was silent, but she was looking at the board and seemed to be listening. It seemed safe. On to the next case. Second, the case that occurred on the 19th. It gets its name, Leaky Noise, from the condition the body was found in. It happened here, in Shinsen. The girl's name was Momone Takayanagi, age 20. She was a Sangit singer on Nikonia. She'd been getting really famous online singing anime theme songs. She was going to sing at the Restoration Festival too. Every sunny day, she'd always go to the same place, at the same time, and put on a performance in her fancy band costume. That day, she started her concert pretty late. But, but something was wrong. Her voice was small, and it didn't sound like she usually did. And then, in the middle of the concert, she died. Blood loss here, too. She'd been stabbed in the stomach before she'd started the concert. What's strange was the condition the body was found in. Ito, play the video. Sure thing. Ito tapped a few keys on the computer's keyboard. And a moment later, Huh? Is this really happening? She's dead. She's really dead. Call an ambulance. Kurusu looked confused when she'd heard the sound. Evidently, she wasn't able to make it out. Oh, uh, not that one. The one Shibuya News upped with the enhanced audio. Oh, yeah, that one. Uh... Huh? Is this really happening? She's dead. She's really dead. Call an ambulance. Thanks. Take it easy. Thanks. Take it easy. Thanks. Take it easy. Her expression changed. She must have been able to hear it this time. Thanks. Take it easy. According to the regulars, that's how she would begin every performance. She's a Nikonia user after all. Lately, people have been saying she's the best Sangit singer around. 
Kurusu seemed to be ignoring me and Ito. She was staring at the computer screen that was the source of the sound. What was that? Himei The screams are from the audience members who discovered the bodies. One of them was recording a video, and that last part was in Takayanagi's voice. It was from a miniature speaker embedded in her stomach. Kurusu seemed confused, so Ito interjected. In other words, the whole concert that day had been pre recorded. Evidence found later indicated that she'd slit open her own stomach with a utility knife she got at a convenience store and then stuck a Bluetooth speaker inside. She closed the wound up with duct tape, not that it actually did much good. Then, she used her clothes and the outfit to hide the wound and began her performance. At first, she played the guitar along with the sound of her recorded voice. But after a while, she stopped playing. That was when she leaned forward and didn't get back up, so she was probably already dead then. But while the audience thought it was strange, they kept listening. Either the blood from her wounds broke the portable music player in her pocket, or maybe it was supposed to be this way from the start. But until that same line you just heard played over and over, no one realized she was dead. Kurusu's face was a mixture of confusion and discomfort. Of course it was. She'd never heard of something like this. I couldn't hold back my excitement. <laughs> Amazing, right? <laughs> Instead of agreeing, Kurusu's brow furrowed. She probably didn't realize it, but she'd wrapped her arms around herself. Hmm. What was wrong? Was that a little too creepy? And? Hmm? Hmm? All we've done so far is go over what we know. What's your discovery? Oh, yeah, he was right. I used the computer to print out a series of pictures. Obviously, we don't know what the motive behind these two killings are. The one suspect we've got is whoever visited Otani's room. We don't know who they are, what they wanted, or what they were talking about. But I think there's more of this to come. It's only a guess, though, based off of something the victims have in common. Huh? Seriously? Ito leapt out of his chair in shock. Well, I couldn't blame him. 
分かったのは渋谷に住んでることと宮道のユーザーだったこと We spent forever going over things that we could have had in common. All we came up with was that they both lived in Shibuya and that they both lived in Nikonia. The only other things that they were both semi famous and that they both died in a bizarre way. But that didn't tell us anything we didn't already know, did it? So you didn't see the other thing that they had in common? I pointed towards the bulletin board as I spoke. Ito looked really annoyed. Damn it, you arrogant asshole. What's up with that thing you're printing out anyway? <laughs> One of the best parts of finding something like this was seeing the angry look on his face. Well, it was only yesterday that I'd found it myself, though. Relax! What did you find? Kurusu beckoned for me to go on. No matter what she said, after hearing all this, she probably wanted to know what came next. Oh, it was done printing. <coughs> Kazuki suddenly stood in front of me. Mm. Mm. She offered me the printed images without a word. Uh, uh, thanks. Mm. Mm. And then she offered me something else. A lollipop? Uh, are you giving me this? She nodded. Thanks. Kazuki seemed to be communicating in her own unique way. She walked over to the bulletin board and taped the data printouts on the two cases with her Kazuki. finger. Kazuki, what's wrong? <laughs> she did it again. I saw the part she was pointing at and so, nodded. And that's right. The dates. The 7th. The 19th. <laughs> That's what they have in common. Strange dates on September 7th and September 19th. Ring a bell? I kept looking at Ito. Usually, he would be the one to pick up on this. A second later. Oh. Oh. He froze. He must have figured it out. Yep, with your love of weird murders, you know what I'm talking about. I pinned the images I just printed out onto the bulletin board's map. September 7th, the group dive. September 19th, the pregnant man. September 29th, crucified. October 10th, the vampire. October 23rd, brain dead. October 28th, yummy hand. November 4th, the DQN puzzle. New generation no kyoki. The new generation madness. Yup, six years ago, 
in 2009, a series of strange deaths had occurred just before the earthquake that struck Shibuya on November 6. They became famous for the words left the scene of every crime. Those eyes. Whose eyes? They called the killings the new generation madness. The murders took place in Shibuya, but the whole country took an interest in them. At the time, I was in sixth grade, and just like a lot of people, I followed every new development on the internet. The dates match up exactly with the dates of the murder six years ago. They may be set up to look like suicides, but they're every bit as weird as the old killings. It's a coincidence. She seemed to be trying to force the words out of her throat. Kurusu was acting a little strange. Her arms clutched her torso even tighter. Vice President. Maybe it was because of all the creepy pictures she'd seen. Kurusu was sh clearly shaking. She tried her best to stop it. As she spoke. Stop trying to connect every little event. It's just a coincidence that they line up. Well, not, we'll know for sure soon. The third new generation madness took place on September 29th. In other words, today. If something weird happens in Shibuya again, we'll know for sure. If a coincidence happens three times, it's not a coincidence anymore. A phone rang. It was mine. Hi. Hey. Yes. Oh. There's been a murder, or maybe an accident. Anyway, I think what you said might have happened. I could feel my heart starting to race as she spoke. 